Hey YouTubers, this is the basically the body of a 820 John Deere two-cylinder tractor with a pony motor that's normally right there. I took it off. We've gotten it prepped for paint, at least I have. I'm a restoration guy. I've been restoring things most of my life. Uh, if you wonder why not every little bit of it's sandblasted, well, I've been doing this a very, very long time. And you, in some applications, you do not need to at all take every little bit of paint off. It doesn't make it any better. And it's cast iron. And when you're sandblasting, you're really trying not to get things into places like right there. And other spots like around a flywheel and stuff. The sand could get in the bearings, destroy them. What are you trying to do basically? You're basically trying to make a good surface for paint to adhere to. And on this particular application, this is fine. Now, I don't think I'll be videotaping me actually painting. I haven't decided if I really want to show the world the voodoo that I do when it comes to my techniques. I can't tell you my techniques are just techniques. They're not tricks. They're not things to cut time in half or to get you done quicker. They just make a better job. And I know that it'll last for well beyond my years. So I'm going to get ready, get suited up to paint this thing. And when I'm all done, I'll shoot another video so you can see how it all turned out. And I can already tell you, it'll be beautiful. All right, as you can see, we have the sealer on it. And if the quality of this camera is as good as I think it is, you should be able to see that it still looks like cast iron, which is the goal that we that we go for. We want to still for it to still look like cast iron, and that it's not all blobbed on. So we'll be painting it next. And how you can tell if you've got if you've got a job really well, you can see it in your sealer. If your sealer job looks good, your paint job is going to look even better. If your sealer looks like crap, you've got runs, he doesn't, you know, it looks blobby, then your paint job's not going to look that good. And if you're wondering why I don't really care about those hubs covered up or anything. Because I'll be pulling them off and re-putting new bearings and cleaning them up anyway. The same way with tires. We'll be getting new tires, redoing the rims, coming off, making the rims functional to come on and off. And the power steering will also be coming off even though it's painted because I believe that there is a leak underneath here in that O-ring, which is drifting down. Here, with temperature change. The lever right there little lever right here that uh this one that goes all the way up to here so all right this is taking quite a bit of time and it's very hot here in texas so it's about around three o'clock now which is actually a really great time to paint but not so good for a human being so let's get this done and uh show you what it's going to look like after there's paint on it We've just finished uh, painting the tractor. I keep saying we, I should say me or I. And I also may add, this is John Deere Green. I particularly doctor this color from John Deere with different chemicals and put a hardener in it and not only is it the color of John Deere green, it is John Deere green from John Deere, from your any John Deere dealer. 
I'm not being promoted to say that or anything. That's just fact. So, and I like using their paint because when I say it's John Deere green, it's John Deere green. And this would be the ag green, not the classic green. And as you can see, we're textured where we need to be. See all that cast iron shine right there? Doesn't look like a big old blob. And then when we come over to the actual smooth parts, see the reflection of the hydraulic pump in there and or the shadows that my hand leaves. You can see that in there. Flywheel shiny. You can see me and the roof in it. That's how it should look. When your smooth stuff is smooth and your cast iron looks like cast iron, it doesn't look fake. It looks real. Now, there are people that do smooth all this out as a novelty, and I think that's really neat. But if you're trying to go for a bit of originality and to paint it, I always try to paint them as if back in the day when it was painted, it's at least a Wednesday. People weren't too tired from coming in on Monday, and they weren't ready to leave on Friday. So I try to put a paint job on them as if they were there on Wednesday and they were in a good mood out of the factory. So that's what I try to do. And if we did miss anything, or there's something that I didn't notice, there is nothing my airbrush can't take care of later on in the restoration. But I'm severely happy. It was nice and clean. It looks really well. Many things that you see like these, they'll be going away. But why I'm doing them now, they covered some holes. So leave them on while you're painting. I will be taking, like I've said and mentioned before, we will be taking this off, but go ahead and paint it, cover it up some holes. It won't mess it up when I'm fixing it. Uh, the clutches, we're gonna be putting new clutches in, no big deal. The motor runs very, very well. We won't be doing any motor work on this one. But we will be doing lots of leak fixing, power steering work. Uh, we will be doing a video on the uh, radiator. I've never done one on a radiator, haven't done any videos, period, but now I am, on how to redo a John Deere radiator from start to finish. And this should, if you watch, this should work for any radiator. I'm even going to show you some tricks if you have problems, if they're rusted out or holes are gone or lack of threads. I'll show you some tricks on that, too. And you'll be surprised how we put them together, and they will never, ever leak. But that's for another time. But here we are. We are done. She is painted, and you will get to see this put together and the rest of its parts put back on, and one of many videos to come next time.